hold it steady. Shauna barked, loading another magazine into her assault rifle before firing at the police cars chasing us. Mashing the accelerator and switching lanes, I grabbed a grenade from the passenger seat, pulled the pin, and tossed it out the window. Fire in the hole, I called back, yanking the wheel to the right to avoid a slow-moving big rig. The explosion lit the highway and sent one of the pursuing police cars tumbling into oncoming traffic. After Shauna dropped a few well-placed shots through the windshield of the last car, it went careening off the road and we sped away. It wasn't always like this. We used to be the ones doing the chasing. We were Dead Men Unit 181. Vampire Hunters. Somewhere along the way, some asshole discovered filtering diseased blood through a vampire's heart cures just about any bloodborne disease. Suddenly, killing parasites was a no-no, and we were outlaws. All dead men units were disbanded, then hunted down and either thrown in prison or killed. That wasn't going to stop us. We became dead men for a reason. Since going broke wasn't an option, we kept hunting. The difference is, now, we take whatever we want from the vampires we kill. As dead men, we weren't allowed to take anything from an extermination. And believe me, we left a lot. That brings us to our current situation. Dodging the cops and trying not to get killed by a cult of local vampire worshippers. We wound up here by accident. We were following a family of parasites. An older couple with a set of twin boys. They were traveling by RV, going from state to state, picking up victims, and leaving a trail. We tailed them to a shitty trailer park on the north side of the city. Shauna was driving, and I was in the back seat taking a nap. Wake up. I think they're getting off the road for the night. Yawning, I sat up and scratched my beard. Where are we? Yale Street. The family just pulled into that trailer park. As we passed, she pointed it out, nodding her head. They haven't fed in two days. They're hunting. We have to hit them tonight. Texas is a kill state. We can't stay here. Kill states are exactly what they sound like. If we get caught, we get put down, no questions asked. Pulling into the gas station at the end of the block, Shauna parked the car. Quick and quiet. We're in the middle of a neighborhood. If things get noisy, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, but let's avoid it if we can. We couldn't. The minute we set foot in that place, there was a problem. Everyone in the trailer park was surrounding the RV we'd been following. There were tables lined with trays of food and decorations set up all over. It was a full-on party. These people, human beings, were welcoming them in with open arms. They had a live band, a fucking live band. It was unbelievable. They drank and danced all night while Shauna and I watched from the shadows. But we were at a distance just far enough for us to still hear what was going on, so we knew how far we needed to keep away from their heightened senses. Right around 3 a.m., and after the band had left, the mother of the family stood and raised her hands. After a few seconds, everyone got silent. Then she spoke. Thank you all for being such kind hosts. We've come to accept your offering in person in order to assure you all the time is near. Soon, you will be embraced by our family share our blood, and be granted long, prosperous lives. Tonight is your final test of faith, the last step between you and the life you deserve. I know it won't be easy, but believe what you've seen with your own eyes, and know 
we are the future. After some cheering, everyone got up from their seats and formed two single file lines creating a path leading to the family. A man and a woman who I assumed were a couple walked a boy down the path and left him standing in front of the family. The father stood and inspected the boy, then nodded to the others before leading him away. I'd seen enough to know we were running out of time. That crowd's gonna be a problem. There's a lot of bodies between us and them. <sighs> you go after the old man and the kid, and I'll take the mother and the twins with the crowd. Make it quick. I won't be able to hold them for long. Shauna shook her head and checked her weapons one last time. Don't get too fucked up out there. It's your turn to drive. Love you, see you in a minute. I watched her slip away in the darkness, then put in my right Bluetooth earbud and queued up something heavy to dance to. Gripping my weapon and letting the music take me away, I felt electric. As the drums hit, my thumb flipped off the safety and I stepped out ready to face the crowd. Before anyone realized what was happening, I locked in on the mother, took aim, and fired. She dropped and the crowd went wild. People were running in every direction. One of the twins raced to his mother's side while the other came charging towards me. He couldn't have been more than 15 or 16 years old. He was short and wiry, looking like a Disney kid with fangs. I had at least a hundred pounds on the little guy, but he was quick. It was next to impossible to get a clean shot. He was purposely using the crowd for cover while getting closer by the second. These people were so clueless. These vampires couldn't give two shits about their well-being. But it would seem these humans were faithful to their new leaders. Shots rang out from my left and some old guy a few feet from me went down, screaming. Getting low and running to the right, I found cover behind a few parked cars. Before I could get a real sense of where the shooter was, something heavy landed on the roof of the car. Without thinking, I backed away, dumping rounds into the first thing I saw. It was a mangled corpse. Realizing it was a distraction, I turned in time to see the kid just before he slammed into me. Thank goodness for the body armor. He wasn't heavy enough to knock me down, but he made me stumble and drop my gun. On the other hand, he landed flat on his ass. Smiling and pulling my knife, I watched him scramble to his feet, eyeballing my rifle on the ground between us. It was only a second, but it felt longer. He reached for it. I stepped on the barrel, stabbed him between the shoulder blades, then grabbed him and threw him against the car. Rebounding almost instantly, he took one step and dropped to his knees, wide-eyed clutching his chest as he gasped and then went still. This ain't the movies, folks. Stab a parasite in the heart with anything, and it's lights out. Hell, you could tear them limb from limb, but if you want them down for good, you have to destroy the brain. Grabbing my rifle to finish him off gave the shooter just enough time to spot me. A shot skipped across the roof of the car next to me, forcing me away from the kid. I didn't have a choice. Moving quickly and staying low, I moved up to a better location and got eyes on him. He was standing in a raised patio attached to one of the mobile homes. It was a clean shot, so I lined him up and took it. Center mass. No cowboy shit. Normally, we try to avoid killing humans, but there's always an exception. Turning my focus back to the kid, I see two people dragging him away. Hey, hey, put that down! I fired a warning shot to scare them off, but it didn't work. Typically, it takes a while for a parasite to recover from that kind of damage, so I figured time was on my side. Moving in quickly, I shot the one with his back to me in the ass then automatically clipped the other guy's hip. As I stepped up to put two in the boy's brain, he opened his eyes in time to see me pull the trigger. Just to be sure, I tapped his heart with a third round. 
A scream that was closer to a roar echoed through the lot. The mother was on her feet and headed my way. I didn't see the other kid till it was too late. The little shit hit me from behind and ran. When I stumbled forward, the mother did something that surprised me. She pulled a gun. Contrary to popular beliefs, being a vampire doesn't instantly turn you into professional fighters. A lot of parasites do use guns, I just wasn't expecting that from her. With hatred in her eyes and venom in her voice, she snarled. You killed my boy! She raised the pistol eye level so I was staring down the barrel. You killed my- There was a shot from somewhere in the distance, and her head exploded, splattering bits of hair and brain sludge on me. I already knew who took the shot. I also knew she could have taken it sooner. Looking around, I spotted Shauna near the trees. She was holding up a duffel bag, and then called out. We gotta go! The cops are coming! Taking a second to put one through the mother's heart, I looked around for the kid. I hadn't gotten a good look at him, but they were twins. I was pretty sure I'd know him if I saw him. Hearing sirens in the distance put some pep in my step as I rushed to catch up. By the time we reached the car and put our gear away, first responders were arriving. Tossing me the keys, Shauna set the bag in the back. Got a surprise for you. She smiled and then stepped closer, flicking a bit of brain out of my beard. Come on, let's go. We can talk on the road. In no time, we were speeding down the highway. Letting her seat back and lighting a cigarette, she let the window down and exhaled. Okay, first off, the kid didn't make it. When I caught up to them, he helped the old man attack me. I locked him in a closet with one of the other leeches while I got rid of the rest and chased down the father. Others? How many? Taking another drag and ashing in an empty soda can, she shrugged. Three, maybe four? I wasn't counting. <laughs> there was something wrong with them. They looked young, but they were falling apart. That's not even the best part. When you shoot them, they pop. Shit goes everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. Anyway, when I caught up to Ed... Ed? Who the fuck is Ed? She gave me her guilty face, then winced. You know I love you, right? So here's the thing. Ed's the father, and uh, I may have cut off his head and brought it with me. Before you get mad, hear me out. When I caught him, he immediately started talking, trying to save his own ass. Dude was giving up names and locations of, get this, government funded nests. If he's telling the truth, this could be huge. Couldn't somebody unzip me? I can't breathe in here. A muffled voice coming from the bag interrupted. A vampire's head can survive a few days without its body, so I wasn't surprised by the fact he was talking. The problem would be what came next. Reaching back and unzipping the bag, Shauna smiled. I made a deal. We get the nests, and he gets a new body when it's over. Worst case scenario, he's lying, and we stuff him in a septic tank somewhere. Slowing down to blend with traffic, I took a second with the idea. Raiding government-funded nests had to be better than going after whatever parasites we could track down. If we kept Ed alive long enough to hit one or two, I'd be satisfied. That would probably give us enough money to keep heading north. Before I could respond, Ed interrupted. I'm dying. I've got no reason to lie. We were being paid to deliver test subjects to nests run by the feds. They kept a boatload of cash on hand for payouts. That's all I know. My first thought was to toss the bag out the window. Smiling at the idea, I shook my head. Okay, Ed. How do you know it's the feds? The guy that hired us was FBI. He calls himself Whitaker, but pretty sure that's bullshit. 
He's the only vampire I've ever seen wearing a badge. Switching lanes and lighting a cigarette. I gave Shauna the nod, and she zipped the bag. It sounds good, but we can't get into this right now. It should take five hours to hit Thackerville. Let's focus on that, we can figure out the rest later. Nodding in agreement and turning up the radio, Shauna let her seat back and relaxed. The miles raced by. Before long, we were driving into a gas station outside of Sanger, Texas. Pulling up to the pump, I couldn't help but stare at the cow pasture across the street. We were in the middle of nowhere. There was the gas station, the pasture, and a small RV park. Other than that, there was the highway. Shauna ran inside to grab a few things while I pumped gas and kept an eye out. After a few minutes, she came strolling out, carrying two bags. Watching her walk towards me felt like a dream. Everything about her was amazing. Even the scar across her face somehow added to her. As that thought crossed my mind, her smirk turned into a scowl, and she yelled, Incoming! Without turning to get a look, I popped the trunk and moved towards it while getting low. I had two rifles loaded and ready to rock by the time Shauna ran up next to me. Tossing the bags in the trunk, she grabbed hers, hurrying past me to put the car between us and them. Three coming in hot! She called out before opening the fire. The lead car never stood a chance. It crashed into a ditch as a second car followed by a van came to a screeching halt. We lit up the second car before they could get out and the van tried to abort the mission. When they threw it in reverse and hit the gas, a good two dozen shots punched through the glass, and it was over. We moved in unison, reloading and rushing out and splitting up to check the cars. Once any survivors were taken care of, we met up at the van. It had rolled backwards across the road and crashed through the fence of the pasture. The driver and passenger were dead, and the cargo door was open. A smoking blood trail in the dirt told us someone made a run for it, but there was no time for a search. We rushed back to the car and hauled ass out of there. Glancing in the rear view and mashing the gas, a thought crossed my mind. We hadn't contacted anyone. How'd they know we were here? Once we were a good distance from the gas station and we were sure no one was following us, I pulled onto a dirt road. It took a few minutes to find an area with cover for the car, but when we were safely out of sight, I brought it up. Those guys weren't professionals. Did you get a look at their weapons, their gear, hunting rifles, shotguns, and a few pistols? No heavy artillery. Not one of them was wearing body armor. Something's not right. Taking a second to think it over, Shauna popped the trunk and grabbed two bottles of water. Passing one to me, she nodded. Yeah, I saw that. Did you notice the blood trail? It had to be a vampire. Did any of Ed's family survive? Shit, the kid. One of the twins ran. I didn't see where he went. Grabbing the bag and unzipping it, Shauna dropped it on the ground between us. Where is he, Ed? Shifting his eyes between the two of us, Ed grimaced. If you kill my son, the deal's off. You may as well finish me right now. Shrugging my shoulders and raising my boot to put an end to this, I smiled. Fine by me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. He, he, he's pretty far away. I can barely sense him. He's not following us. That's, that's the best I can do. As long as he knows I'm alive, he's going to keep coming after me. Whenever I feel him, I'll let you know. That way you can avoid him till this is over. Please just don't kill him. Letting my foot back down, Shauna and I shared a look. Then I stepped away to light a cigarette. Nudging the bag with her foot, she told Ed if we saw the kid again, there would be two heads in the bag instead of one. 
When she was finished with the pep talk, she tossed the bag in the trunk, then came to join me. If this plays out the right way, we might make enough money to get out of the States for good. She was right. After all, that was the point of all this. We'd been trying to get enough cash to buy our way out, but we'd been making just enough to keep us on the run. If we could get to Thackerville and meet with our contacts, it would buy us a week or two. That would give us time, but it also meant we'd have to find a way to keep Ed alive, and I had a real problem with that. So, what are we going to do about him? If we don't get him a body, he's no good to us. He won't live long enough for this to work. I'm telling you right now, I'm not doing it. Keep in mind, this has to happen in the next day or two. Otherwise, Ed's dead. Taking a sip from her bottle, Shauna paused for a second, then smiled. We could make him a Wilson. I couldn't help but laugh at that. A Wilson is when you take all the internal organs a vampire needs, put them in a bag, then attach the living head to the bag. It's a temporary fix that would keep him alive, but we would still have to feed him. It was a reasonable compromise. Plus, I wanted to see if it actually worked. I agreed to the plan, and after laying low for a while, we got moving. Less than an hour later, we were pulling into Thackerville. It's a small town, so getting to our contact didn't take long. We followed the 77 to Sandpiper Road and made a left. Near the end of the street, just before the railroad tracks, sits an old house attached to a scrapyard. The rusted-out pickup still sat in the driveway, taking up space, but seeing them again made me smile. The place is run by an older couple, Ben and Audrey Porter. They were one of the few civilian assets still operating. It had been years since we'd seen the Porters. When we pulled in the driveway, Ben was sitting on the porch. As soon as the car stopped, he sat back and slipped his hands under the blanket that was covering his legs. Nudging me, Shauna chuckled. Ten bucks says he's still got that old salt off in his lap. Looking over at him, I smirked. But there's no way he still has that thing. The moment we stepped out of the car, Ben's face lit up. Audrey, get out here. You ain't gonna believe who it is. The sound of movement from the piles of junk behind us made us turn to see Audrey stepping out, holstering her pistol. With a warm smile and open arms, she hurried over to Shauna and gave her a big hug. Pulling away and looking her over, she shook her head. I knew it. I knew you were still out there somewhere. Good lord, child, where have you been? Still holding Shauna by the shoulders, Audrey turned her attention to me. Leo, I see you're still alive. You've been taking good care of my girl here? The old lady didn't like me, but she tolerated my existence as long as Shauna was around. Smiling and nodding, I gave her a dry, yes ma'am, then walked over to talk with Ben. What's under the blanket, old man? Smiling, he tossed the blanket aside, revealing the double barrel sawed off. Shaking my head and laughing to myself, I reached out to shake his hand. Squinting his left eye and using his right to look at me, he huffed. Looks like the world's been kicking your ass. Good to see you're hanging in there. What brings you this close to no man's land? 